disrupt it. Thing to happen. <laughs> Hello, one and all. Welcome to this edition of Kit's Corner. We're having a fantastic day so far. So much like the truckers here in Canada, as when the Freedom Convoy came around, the Dutch farmers are not folding. They're not caving to the globalist agenda. They're not caving to the oligarchy, uh, squashing the means of agriculture and just how devastating it is. We all know that this is the ploy of using climate change as a tactic to go against the farming industry while they allow Bill Gates and other uh, mega tech giants and other, you know, tycoons, billionaire tycoons in the global hemisphere buy up all this farmland to basically turn everything into plant processed food and synthetics and, and all this harmful chemicals that are being injected into uh, vegetables and livestock. That's even Bill Gates announcing that. He said that he wanted to inject uh, mRNA chemicals into livestock, which I'm sure is very safe and effective in coordinates with YouTube. But here's what a Dutch farmer uh, had to say about this because he did a speech here and this was posted and it says, listen to this brave Dutch farmer as he warns the political establishment. And again, if you think this is about climate change, if you think that destroying the farming industry, which is the most eco-conscious profession on earth, the most eco-conscious, eco-conscious uh, uh, people, they're, they're the most environmentally sacred occupation going on earth right now if you think they're damaging the climate they're in fault of creating this climate change while you have people that are flying on private jets and creating a uh, thousand plus war uh munitions that are causing harmful effects to the environment they blew up the Nord Stream pipeline ignoring all that but blaming farmers listen to this speech because this is impactful so he goes on by saying oh, the line. We want to show you we mean business, and not just according to us. In all of Europe, we can see that the farmers are actively being... Hold on. They're actively being destroyed. They are creating food scarcity, and that is done on purpose. That, your pretty words can't change that. The cattle farmers, our wallets are empty. I'm listening to you telling us all that these stories, but you said nothing that is going to change anything. Nothing is being resolved and nothing is being done. These problems are being created on purpose, consciously. These left-wing hobbies. I just hear other people praise these hobbies. They're at, they absolutely love them. It has nothing to do with our democracy. They are based on nothing but lies. The entire European and Dutch population, and with the farmers, they want healthy foods. They don't want insects. They don't want to eat plants. They don't want. To, they want to eat normally, like we've always had. And the farming sector like we always have, is being decimated with, with lies and climate problems that are being created on purpose. It makes no sense. And also, you, all these people who work here, you are the ones, you are the ones executing those policies. And everyone is hiding behind Brussels. But what is Brussels? It's a city in Belgium. The city is no threat. It's the people who are pulling the strings. It's people who execute these policies and eventually they will be held accountable. We farmers don't go here often to talk about these things and such. We also will show that you mean business. Because apparently that's the only way out of this. No more talk. We will fight back. We will fight. And that is what's going to happen in Brussels right now. I salute those farmers. I respect them. And their courage to fight against the uprush of our average of our leaders and our electives. I respect that. And maybe that's the only way we will win this. Don't win this battle then soon. And I'm not speaking directly in you purposely. It will continue across many lines that will create civil war in Europe. So this is when the farmers openly stating that we gave you chances, we gave you opportunities. We're 
dying. We're 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 at our last hope. You have broken this uh, the hump of the camel's back so far. You have crossed that line to the point where we have to. This is all we got left. We have to fight because otherwise you are going to kill us. You're going to kill the farming industry, and we will have nothing left. We will have food scarcities that they're already creating. And this is not this is not hyperbole. This is not nothing new. We are having this right here in our own territories. We're having this with farmers here in Canada. We have shown multiple times the video of the dairy farmer in Canada, in Ontario, that had to dump out, I think it was over 700 gallons of milk. He had to dump out because he was over quota, but because our farms are operated by huge corporations and they restricted the farmers from selling their excess, selling their surplus at a cheaper rate at a time where we're dealing with cost of living and food and grocery bills are expensively high. Like, it seems logical that if you're overproducing milk, you would sell it at a cheaper rate and try to get it on the shelves as possible. But no, they told them to dump it out. So they're creating these scarcities. They're creating this inflation. They're creating the cost of food to skyrocket because of this, because they're demonizing the farmers. They're demonizing the agricultural industry, which is the most eco-conscious profession on earth. And who are doing that? The so-called environmentalists that are taking private jets off to Davos every year. The same people that blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, creating a natural disaster in, in, in the ocean. The same people, the same people that are spending trillions of dollars waging warfare and putting nuclear weapons into harm's way. The same people that don't acknowledge East Palestine, Ohio, and the natural disaster that occurred. The same people that disregard <coughs> the most frequent pollutants on planet Earth. The most frequent pollutants on planet Earth. And they're demonizing the farmers. That's how I know this is being used as a scam. I'm not saying that climate change is a complete hoax. I'm saying that there's a lot of manipulative people out there that will take that and use it as a scam. They're using this as a scam. And you're not, you don't trust people like Bill Gates or Elon Musk or Greta Thunberg or Al Gore, any but that, that are demonizing farmers. They're demonizing naturalists. They're dealing, they're demonizing people. They're actually in touch with nature. And this, this, this is, this is a red flag warning. And it's such a red flag warning that even a politician in Brussels um, pointed this out. So this is from Wall Street Silver, uh, quoting, this is from a Dutch member of the European Parliament, Rob Roos, or is it Rob Roos? Roos, Roos, Roo, Roo, Roo. <laughs> um, and he's about to speak here on behalf of the farmers. And this is amazing to see someone in European Parliament actually taking notice of this because the the Dutch farmers have been protesting for a long while and they've been trying to cover it up through mainstream media. We don't even get to hear about it much because we know that our farmers are getting screwed here. And if we see those farmers protesting, then more than likely it's going to happen here. And I wish it happened more here. I wish that we took the energy of the truckers here in Canada the same energy as the Dutch farmers, the same energy as the auto workers. If all working class people got together, all walks of life got together, unity and, and, and fighting for common goals and common interests, imagine the prosperous outcome we can get. But we're told to completely be divided. We're, we're told this nonstop because they want us out of line. They want us to keep us in the establishment order. They want us to not realize that we're getting screwed over. As George Carlin points out in a stand-up, they want us smart enough to work the clogs and gears of the establishment, but not be smart enough to figure out that we're being oppressed to do that. Um, so here's, this is the member of the European Parliament saying this. Overall in Europa, come boeren in protest. It says, all over Europe, let me put this down. All over Europe, farmers are starting to protest. The, the direct spilled. cause vary. In, in the Netherlands, it's about nitrogen. In, in Germany, it's higher taxes. My, the but the underlying reason is deeper, and, is and that is the same the everywhere. In, in Brussels, Brussels and in our capitals, the ruling class has decided that we are living 
strongly and that, alles anders that, moet. that everything must change. The urban academic ruling class is tremendously is disconnected. Er is een tussen de grote meerderheid en de stedelijke and the vast majority of people. Klasse. This ruling class klasse, controls politics, politiek, maar but doesn't appreciate farmers. De Even though farmers feed all of us every day. Iedere dag. Yet the ruling class wants our wants our wants our farmers to disappear. Wil onze boeren laten verdwijnen. Regeltje voor regeltje. One regulation at a time. Then they can conclude trade agreements with the entire world. Met de hele wereld. But from now on, we will be importing apples from Vietnam. All in the name of climate, of course. Isn't that another interesting little factoid? They care so much about climate change that instead of growing apples here. In our own nations, that would actually reduce the transportation needs. They're going to ship it from other countries. It's the, it's the same as, you know, oil supply. You know, here in Canada, Alberta in particular, we have a huge reservoir when it comes to oil and natural gas. But instead of shipping that here in Canada and providing Canada with efficient natural resources of our own territories... We're going to get it from another country and have it shipped from another part of the world, which is more pollutants into the air. All in the name of climate change. You, you members in the European Parliament in need to look in the mirror. These massive farmer protests are about you. You are responsible for this. Stop, Stop forcing people to live differently. And stop, stop making it impossible for farmers to do their jobs. We, we absolutely need our farmers. Nodig. Absolutely. Food, food security is also is a matter of national security. No farmers, no, farmers, no, no food, food, no future. No future. That's why this is such a big deal. And that's why they will, they're will. they trying so hard to avoid people realizing this. They're They're trying so hard to hide this from the general public. That's why you can only see this through social media, through like Twitter and X and uh, certain posts that people have made, but it's so impactful. And it is a matter of national security. It's a matter of everybody, um, regardless of who you are. It's a trans issue. It's an LGBTQ issue. It's an everything issue because we all need food. We all need farmers. We're all connected to farmers somehow. Every single one of us. And that's why I have a huge, outstanding respect for farmers in that industry. I'm not exactly a farmer. I, I'm not a farmer myself, and I don't claim to be or uh, have hopes to be, but I respect people in that industry because of exactly what he said there. They're responsible for feeding us. They're responsible for our, our safety, our, our civility, our, our, our ability to live on this earth. And if they can't do their job, we don't have food. We have no future. We're dead. And we can't, we, we're, we're not going to survive on synthetics. We're not going to survive by eating bugs. It's physically impossible for human beings to survive primarily on bugs and synthetics. But they're saying all this in the hopes that people will believe it because of climate change. Even though these are the most climate conscious people on planet Earth. They're the ones that need to know about the climate. They know the effects about climate change because it affects their crops. And if we don't have the crops, we don't have vegetation. We're not able to control that CO2 through photosynthesis. And we actually lose oxygen in the atmosphere. I bet, I bet none of the environmentalists, you know, Al Gore and all that mentioned all this to you. But the mass amount of CO2 that's in the air is actually making things greener. And if we have more green on our earth, if we have more trees, more plants, more uh, vegetation, more uh, crops being grown, they're going to create more oxygen. And we're definitely not going to get that from, you know, CO2 canisters that Petro -Canada, Pe Petro Canada and Shell and all these other corporations are trying to invest in. I keep hearing that on the radio, like they're spending billions of dollars on a, a carbon capture technology. Which they could easily do with trees. And the thing with carbon capture technology, it's not going to produce oxygen. They're capturing the carbon and it's just going to sit there in a metal box. 
instead of something that trees can easily do for cheaper and is actually way more efficient and beneficial for life on Earth. Good job, guys. Um, and here's how, how much unity and support there is for the farming industry. Just like we saw with the truckers here in Canada with the Freedom Convoy, that same exact energy, that same exact uh, motivation, the exact same unity that we so desperately need in times like this. We so desperately need more of this to come out. Um, just how great this is. This is this is a row of tractors lining up a highway in somewhere in Europe. I do believe it's Italy because Italian flag there. But these are farmers all over Europe. So they have gathered alongside this stretch of highway and they've closed down roadways. They have, you know, thrown literally manure <laughs> at government offices. They have like, they have all rallied together because enough is enough. You, you, you're decimating on our food supply. That is going to impact everybody. And that's why everybody should be worried and, 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 and paying attention to this and being supportive of this. Because this affects everybody, everybody, regardless of who you are. And this goes miles long. Look at that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. just me or is that does that look like a body being hanged from one of the tractors i don't know italian much so i i don't know what i i'm guessing that's supposed to symbolize one of the politicians i don't know <laughs> okay okay you know it's 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 symbolic either way it's symbolic <laughs> oh but that's awesome that's awesome uh, to see the, the, the notion that, again, the unification of people gathering together in support of common goals. Like, everybody is impacted by the scarcity of food. Everyone's impacted by our agricultural division because that is what feeds us. That is what motivates us. That's what keeps us on this earth alive and well. And if we don't have that, then humanity is screwed. You don't have a human race anymore, regardless, just like with nuclear war. That's why people should be coming together with these common goals, regardless of who you are in this world. Whether you're a liberal or a, a, a conservative or Democrat, Republican, whoever, whoever you are, uh, regardless of religion, race, credence, sexual orientation. If you're a human being or just a living creature on this planet, you need food. That's, that should be a simple, simple notion for everybody. But I just, it, it's it's so amazing. I just wish we had more of this here because I know that farmers in Canada are getting screwed by the same policies. I know in the States, like Bill Gates is buying up all the farmland in America and doing the exact same crap. Um, I just, it'd be a perfect world if we just took the farmers, same with the truckers, and uh, union workers, uh, manufacturing jobs, if we can get all those people together 
uh, to show solidarity, to show that we are a fighting force, that the working class people are not going to get fooled with. We're not going to step down uh, to the globalist empire. We are a fighting force. We are going to stand and we are going to march. We are going to fight with every last shot to keep us uh, alive and keep us well and to keep the uh, modern middle class alive. Like if we if we were able to do that, just how amazing that would be, how impactful that would be. We saw a bit of it with the uh, Freedom Convoy and I I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen again because, again, we're just seeing more further division and they're just trying every tactic of the book to keep us further divided. But this this is great. I again, I love farmers. I love respect them. Um, a lot of farmers in my family going back generations. So maybe that's why I have, again, huge, huge respect for this industry. So I'm I'm so happy that they're not backing down. And hopefully I have full support and hopefully we can get through this because globalism is going to kill us. It's not a hyperbole. That's. Literal fact, it's going to kill us.